G'day, bloody dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Did review. Hope you're all having a fucking perler of a day. We've got ourselves a new bridge for your Boros, a high bridge. That's its name, high bridge. It is from N Quadro over in Italy. Very fucking nice. It's an all-in-one bridge and tank setup. I've got it sitting in the Monarchy Stubby Limited Edition. This was a little prototype we did in gunmetal, so not your regular color, but uh, looking very nice there, silver and gunmetal. The drip tip, if you're wondering, is from Mission XV. So what you got here basically is the Mocha um, RTA, or Mocha Light is the one that I reviewed a little while back, but in a Boro form. It's got the same design on the inside of the chamber to condense things right above the coil, but also some extra space in the chamber to keep the heat down, which is meant to improve flavor. And whatever the fuck was going on, whether it's that or something, else I absolutely loved the fucking mocha light the flavor of that was fucking beautiful so you've got the same concept here but in a boro tank with uh, the same deck and a, a top-down wicking system just like the RTA I'm running a 0.7 ohm uh, little MTL Clapton in here at 20 fucking watts let's take it for a toot Just like the Mocha RTA, this thing has fucking amazing flavor. Really, really nice, dense, saturated flavor, and uh, the clouds, well, it's MTL, so not expecting huge plumes, but it is just a fucking beautiful vape. We're gonna get down and have a good squiz at this thing, show you how to wick it, but before we can get there, of course, we gotta have a fucking beer, eh? We've got a chocolate cherry stout today from Bowdoin Brewing. It is called Maurice and the Cherry Temple. Got a little bit of Indiana Jones thing going on there, a little chocolate Indiana. A limited edition, I believe, from Bowdoin Brewing. Uh, says on the back here, hold on to your hats and whips. Maurice and the Cherry Temple is here with a 7.2% ABV. It's a brew of epic proportions. Watch Maurice, our chocolate hero, in his leathery best, outwhip a cherry boulder. It's a flavor adventure that's bittersweet and hilariously fruity. Well, I don't know whether I've had a hilariously fruity beer before. Don't know how the fruits are funny, but <laughs> sounds like it's gonna be pretty fucking tasty. 7.2%, uh, so it'll fucking get you going in the morning. And uh, Bowdoin Brewing are uh, in South Australia. Let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Looking good, as dark as a politician's soul. Smells chocolatey, dickheads. Fucking cheers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, rich, loaded with uh, the heavy chocolate flavors you get with a stout. And there is, yeah, a real natural, very dark cherry sort of flavor there. It's a natural cherry. It's that sort of, that darker kind of cherry flavor. Lots of coffee flavor as well, which you usually expect with any stout. You got the chocolate, more of a dark chocolate flavor than a creamy milk chocolate. There's not a lot of sweetness to this one. It's got those bitter, roasty stout flavors, malty, just a, a real nice fucking cold weather stout that. Not super thick, but not a thin stout, kind of sitting somewhere in the middle of a stout mouthfeel, I reckon. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. Got a bit of Rebel Bogan going today. This is the Plum Job flavor, which is the plum and tobacco. I've talked about it plenty of times. It's a red plum with a tobacco, but it's not your traditional tobaccos. It's not full smoky. It's not heaps tobacco-y. If you don't like tobaccos, I fucking challenge you to give it a go because you probably like it. It's uh, not your usual tobacco flavor and it goes fucking beautifully with a stout, usually those nice sort of rich tobacco flavors with chocolate and coffee. And the plum is a nice little fruity element that should work well with our fucking cherries. Let's fucking see. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, the cherry with the fucking plum, nice little dark fruit combo there. And obviously chocolate goes real nice with uh, tobacco. Yeah, those roasted malt flavors of a stout, just a, a perfect combination with the tobacco sort of flavors. The plum job has the, for me, the taste of a fresh pouch tobacco smell, if that makes sense. The, the smell you get from a fresh pouch of uh, roll your own tobacco. 
but in taste form. And that just goes fucking beautifully together with a stout. But enough waffling over the malts. Let's get down the up and close. Let's have a good squiz at this thing and then we'll talk pros and cons. Let's have a sticky beak. Okie fucking dokie dickheads. This is the packaging. Your high bridge will come in. Just a nice little metal tin, as you can see there. Napoli, Italy. Let's just see what you get inside. Well, of course, you'll find the bridge. A bag of spares, including heaps of different O-rings, gaskets. There's a spare peak insulator in there. Spare flathead screws for the deck, as well as some alternative airflow pins. And a little certificate of authenticity. But let's get into it. So it's an all-in-one uh, bridge and tank system. So you've got the tank and the, uh, the deck and everything supplied. You won't need your own Boro tank. You've got high bridge on one side and then on the other, and you've got the Aniquadro text down there. Stainless steel finish. Now, there may be some other colors coming, but uh, I think at the moment, I've just seen stainless steel. You've got a polycarbonate uh, tank section, which will hold five milliliters of liquid. Got a little fill port over here. Pop that open, fill her up, away you go. Five mil of capacity, very decent. The outside is a nice polished finish. The inside uh, has more of that sort of matte finish, but once you fill it with liquid, uh, that gets really nice and clear. We'll show you that in a bit. Down to the bottom here, you've got the usual kind of branding and uh, you know Napoli Italy stuff there. You've got some 510 threads, so when you're building it, you just screw it straight onto a mod via those threads and away you go. You can see the airflow pin I've got in there at the moment, if the camera would focus, there we go. Uh, 1.2 millimeters is what I've got currently in here. Now it will come with a 1.5 and what's this one here? A 1.8, yeah, 1.5, 1.8 uh, included. So three airflow pins total, not bad. All kind of mouth to lung-ish. There is also a two and 2.5 millimeter pin available for just five euros as a separate purchase if you prefer a more restricted direct lung, the two and 2.5 are available, but out of the box, more of your MTL kind of level. I really like the uh, the look of this one. It's got some nice sort of heat sink fins around the side of it, kind of keeping the whole thing a little bit cooler, but I think looking a little bit cooler as well. I don't mind the, uh, the nice, aesthetic fucking design to this one. Very, very clean. So get your tank apart. If you want to clean it and whatnot, you're just going to pop the top off like so. The chimney is threaded in there, so I'm not sure how you would get that out too easily. You can't really get much purchase like that. Um, and there's nothing to sort of, you know, get in there with like a, a flathead or a you know, tool or something. So I don't think you're really meant to remove it, uh, but yeah, that is sort of fixed in there and this just slides straight on. You can see before we get to the deck, your wicking holes. So liquid is gonna be coming from the top down. What they've done here is kind of take the mocker RTA design um, and apply it to a Boro bridge, which I absolutely love because the mocker or the mocker light is what I had, has absolutely fantastic fucking flavor. And this is basically a Boro version. So if we grab the base here, we can pull out the deck. There we go. And you'll see that the inside here is basically the same design as the mocker. You've got that sort of stepped design around the chimney opening. So they've got little steps there. That I think was a big contributor on the flavor on the mocha. But then you've also got these little kind of chiseled out triangles. Again, creating some more space in the chamber for air to kind of keep the space cool and not let your liquid or your vapor get overheated, which is the same sort of thing they did with the mocha or the mocha, don't know why I'm calling it the mocha, but um, you've got this kind of condensed chimney entrance here right underneath where the coil is gonna be. So you're still getting that kind of condensed uh, area around where the coil is, but then you've got this extra space in the sides of the deck, which allow a little bit more air in there to keep things cool, which is sort of why I think the flavor is so good it's giving you, you know, a small chamber around the chimney and the coil, but then 
extra space on the sides to keep the heat down. I just absolutely love the flavor off of the, uh, the mocha and this has that same fucking amazing flavor. Really, really good. You've got the same sort of flat head posts offset where you kind of clamp. There is, uh, again, I'm not using my usual macro lens so it's not as easy to kind of see real close how they've done this but it's like the mocha where you've got these little there's like a little tray either side of the screw heads where you're going to put your uh, coil leg you can either go on the inside of the the coil or inside of the uh, heads there the flat heads or there's another groove here you could put it on the outside if you've got a really long coil but if you've got a coil like I have here you want to put the leg on the inside of the flathead screw there and the coil is kind of sitting on an angle with the cotton getting tucked into these little channels here and then they line up perfectly with the wicking ports above. So just a really simple but very easy to install build. If you want to see me building this for the first time I'll put a link in the description to the live build stream but it was a piece of piss to install. It's basically the same as the mocker just in a boro form. So it's a square version or a rectangular version of the uh, mocha. So very easy to set up. We've got the coil just positioned right about there. And this has been fan-fucking-tastic on the flavor. Now big apologies for the lack of a macro lens. Once again, uh, not so easy to see the beautiful detail on this coil, but uh, we'll do my best. Uh, it's from Steamcraft over in South Africa. Fucking big shout out to you, mate. Uh, fused. Fused MTL 2.5, so these are a 0.7 ohm uh, Fused Clapton, I believe, uh, recommended at 10 to 20 watts. I've been running mine around 19, 20, and they have been fucking beautiful. Came in at bang on the 0.7, I think 0.71 for me, uh, and uh, this is just a fucking beautiful, beautiful vape. And uh, what we're gonna do now is show you how to wick it. Chuck a fresh bit of cotton in here, give you a quick little tutorial, and uh, we will jump back up top, so let's fucking get into it. go. As you can see, once you've got a bit of liquid in there, that uh, polycarbonate gets lovely and clear. And we are ready to fucking chuck this in a mod. Got the stubby monarchy edition prototype. Lovely drip tip from Mission. And I reckon that looks pretty fucking nice. But let's jump back up top, talk some pros, cons, prices and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads. The high bridge from Enequadro. Let's just get stuck into the pros and cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, first things first, the fucking flavor off this thing, just like the Mocha RTA, absolutely fucking bellissimo, as they would say in Italy. <laughs> really, really fucking good. The design that they have with the sort of excess space in the corners of the chamber, but with the sort of reduced area right above the coil, seems to be working once again. Uh, the flavor I'm getting from this is basically identical to the uh, the Mocha Light, just in a Boro bridge format, which if you don't like RTAs and you prefer Boros, you're gonna be fucking happy about because you get the same vape with a Boro. So yeah, absolutely loving the flavor out of this thing. The airflow, really nice and smooth, whether you're using the 2.5 millimeter RDL pin or like I've got here, a 1.2 millimeter MTL pin.
really nice, really fucking smooth. It's easy as piss to build on. Again, as I said earlier, I'll put the link in the description to the live build stream when I set this guy up, but very easy installing your coils. Wicking it has been a piece of piss as well. As you can see just before, you're literally sticking your cotton through, tucking it into the little you know, kind of triangular trenches, and then the top just lines up beautifully. I've had no leaking, I've had no dry hits, just like the RTA, uh, wicking very simple and no performance issues whatsoever. So in terms of usability, fucking big pro ski. Obviously build quality is another pro here. It is made in Italy and you can see that. The machining, very, very nicely done. All the tolerances, the deck comes away from the, uh, the top section with just the right amount of tension. The machining, the design, I think aesthetically, it's a really nice, really clean looking bridge. So uh, yeah, done a, a fucking great job on the manufacturing. And on uh, the usability, again, you can access the deck without having to drain your tank. You just tip it upside down, you pull your deck out, put a fresh bit of cotton in there and away you go. So if you find yourself with a full tank, but a dodgy uh, burnt out wick, then uh, you don't have to worry. You don't have to drain your fucking tank uh, to change out that cotton. So definitely a nice convenient little pro ski there. Five mils of liquid is definitely on the higher end of the spectrum for a Boro tank. So no complaints there. In fact, I'll give it a fucking thumbs up for the five mils of uh, liquid. And a little thing that I did notice, uh, obviously you get three pins right out of the box, which is just fine. But if you do prefer something a little bit more open, the two, the 2.5, there's also a one millimeter pin available separately. And rather than having to buy like a full pack of pins for like 30 euros or something, they're just doing the uh, individual pins for five euros. So you can kind of just pick the one that you want if it's not included and it'll only cost you fiver. So cons, what do I have to fucking complain about? Well, much like the Mocha Light RTA I reviewed a little while ago, not a whole lot here. I'm absolutely loving the fucking performance, the build quality, the ease of use, everything that I look for in a bridge, it is doing well. All I could really say is you don't have a huge array of RDL pins or even direct lung pins. The biggest pin I can see available is uh, 2.5 millimeters. So if you like a three, 3.5, four, four and a half, if you like a more open uh, airflow in your boros, this thing is not gonna be able to give it to you. 2.5 is not a huge amount of airflow, even uh, at the widest option. Uh, it also is not gonna be compatible with other Boro tanks. So if you like to use your own tank, you know, if you wanna put it in something else, not really an option. It is just the tank that it comes with. Not a big deal, but something to mention because people do like to use some of their own tanks. Apart from that, I really cannot find any major cons or faults here. It has been an absolute fucking joy to use. Absolutely fucking love the flavor of this thing. It's so fucking tasty. But uh, what is it gonna set to your back dickheads? Well, they aren't cheap, but they aren't crazy expensive. For something that is Italian, I think they're actually pretty reasonably priced. Now, I can't tell you where to fucking get them thanks to YouTube policy, so don't bloody ask me, but I did a bit of a Google, and I've seen them going for as low as 81 euros, which is about 68 fucking pounds in England. Uh, some sites have got them a little bit more around about the 99 euros, but yeah, as I said, I found it for uh, 81 euros, which is about the same, it's like 83 US. So not crazy expensive, not the cheapest option in the Bora world, but for the build quality and the performance and for an Italian fucking uh, product, that's actually a damn decent deal. So uh, yeah, thumbs up, I reckon, on the fucking price tag. So uh, that's about it, dickheads. Don't have a whole lot more to say here. I could sit here and gush a little bit more, but that's not gonna fucking help you. So uh, I'll bugger off. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you wanna check out what this fuckwit gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you wanna support the channel, please do. As always, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. That is always helpful. Share the video around because as you know, YouTube and their fucking algorithms really don't like us vape reviewers. But if you really wanna keep me behind this fucking lens, then think about becoming a patron. I do a special video once a week on there you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community. We have a Facebook group in a Zoom room. You can have a beer with myself over the weekend. Those fuckers keep me doing my thing. So a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a fucking Boro Bridge, a fucking RTA, an RDA, or maybe a fucking pod. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.